today I want to start, and this is going to be part one. This is going to be just an introduction, and I'm not planning on preaching very long this morning. For an, I can't imagine why, but uh, at any rate, I'm not planning on preaching very long today. And everybody said amen. amen. If I can't get an amen out of that, I'm telling you somebody's dead in here, all right? But this is going to be, we're going to be dealing with the power in his presence, of his presence. We're going to be dealing with that for several weeks. Say presence. presence. Number one on your note sheet today. We were created for his presence. We were purposed. For relationship with God. We're not saved just to know about God. He saved us. He bridged and made a way through the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. That we may know Him. Hallelujah. And the apostle uh, Paul, he wrote here... It was his prayer that we would have a spirit of wisdom and of revelation of really knowing experientially Jesus Christ. The knowing God. Not knowing about God, but knowing God. In capturing, embracing, enveloping, uh, coming into his presence. We, we sung that song for offertory today. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and the courts with praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We come together. His presence is here. There's an intimacy with God that we need as Christians in our Christian walk, in our creation, Christian relationship that we need to develop in our walk with God. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 10, this will be the thrust of my scripture text today. And they heard the voice or the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden. This is talking about Adam and Eve. They heard the voice or the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are Art thou? Can I say the Holy Spirit is asking that question? He's delving into the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, in this last day, hour of time that we live before He comes back. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is crying out to men and women everywhere, Where art thou? He said, Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. There's three attributes today that I noticed in studying and preparing for this message. Three attributes of his presence and this is I didn't get this out of commentary. I didn't get this out of a book. I got this between me and the Holy Spirit and God's Word. So this is Russell translation here, okay? Number one, on your note sheet, letter A, God isn't silent. Write that down. God isn't silent. The scripture says they heard the voice, the sound of God. God has a sound. Uh, the way he walked, he came 
and visited him daily. Number two, God takes his time. God wasn't running through the garden. God wasn't rushing through the garden. But they heard the voice of his presence. He, they heard the sound of his presence. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Hallelujah. That's why I sung that. I added that song in. And he walks with me. Huh? When God's leading, we don't have to get in a hurry. Mark, Rus Mark Russell's preaching to Mark Russell right now. I'm the worst hurrier in the world. If I'm in a car, Lord help me, I gotta work on not breaking the speed limit. I'm in a hurry. I want to get to wherever I'm going. I want to get whatever needs to get done so that I can sit down and rest. I want to always try to stay ahead of the thing. But God, he don't get in a hurry. God's got his time. God has his way. And God has a pace. Say pace. P-A-C-E. -E. Something I'm, I'm learning as pastor, is this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. You've heard me say that. Turn, turn to your neighbor and say, you got to pace it. Don't wear yourself out with God. Walk with God. Uh, how many's got a dog? And you might wonder, well, you won't call him a dog, you'll call him baby. You'll call him your little boy. I call him my little Charlie Brown. Every now and then I'll give him a little kiss right on the head. He's my Charlie Brown. He's my bud. Now that dog, I would take that dog for a walk. Of course, I keep him on a leash. That dog will wear himself out halfway through the walk, walk because he's constantly pulling. Huh? He's constantly choking himself because he's pulling. He wants to walk faster than what I'm willing to walk. Do we not do that with God? Hello? And we wind up giving ourselves a, a collar burn, a collar rash, choke ourselves half the time because we're trying to get in too many a hurry with God. God came down in the garden and he was walking. He came to walk with them, to spend some time, not to get in a hurry. He just came to, I just want to be with you. The Lord's teaching me in my personal walk with him. He's teaching me to sit down and lay down agendas just to come into his presence and just to worship him. To come into his presence and just to listen for him. Just to come into his presence and me open my heart to him and just commune with him. I'm having communion weekly with him. Once or twice. I'll get up in the middle of the night, way in early in the morning, and I'll find a piece of bread, and I'll find, we got Shelly likes grape juice, and we keep a little grape juice, and I'll have me a little grape juice, and I'll have communion at 2.30 in the morning sometimes. Why? It's with me and God. God, I'm just sitting down here in my, on my living room couch, and I'm having communion with you, God, and I'm opening myself up, talk to me, Holy Spirit. God came down. His presence came. He made his presence known. Not by running through. You know there was a prophet named Elijah. He felt. He, he had a, a, a desperate moment in his life. He went. He went and hid himself in a cave. And God. 
there, there was an earthquake and fire and whirlwind, but God wasn't in none of those. It came, God came in a still, small voice. God isn't silent. God is making himself known. God is making himself available. God is making himself present. The scripture says the son of God, he's a very present help in the time of trouble. God takes his time. He's walking, not running. He's not pushing. He's saying, here I am. Why don't you walk with me? Number three. Let her see. God likes a breeze. You say, what? I, breeze. B-R-E-E-Z-E. -E. Breeze. The, the expression in Genesis here, where it says the cool of the day, that word cool, if you go into the Greek Hebrew concordance, you will find the actual translated word is ruach. It means breath. It means wind. There was, there was at, at, at the time of the day, every day, when God came walking, there was a breeze blowing. There was a wind blowing through the garden. Hallelujah. It was a picture, it was a type of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one cord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. Every day God showed up, not running, not in a hurry, not all, oh, Jesus, what am I going to do? He came walking in and there was a breeze, there was a wind blowing through the garden. Number two, number three on your note sheet today. Relationship begins with conversation. God calls, sheep respond. God calls. God starts the conversation and we respond. We sense the presence. God's presence is in this place even today. God's presence was moving. Hallelujah. A while ago. And, and some of you were responding. Some of you were lifting your hands. Hallelujah. Conversation isn't about you doing all the talking. I'm going to say that. I'm going to hide behind. Oh, I can't hide. Conversation doesn't mean you're doing all the talking. Conversation means you're listening. God calls. We respond. God speaks. We respond. God moves, we respond. Relationship begins with conversation. If God, through the Holy Spirit, by His presence, is trying to have a conversation with you, He that hath an ear, let Him hear. Amen? God is speaking, God is not silent. God is taking his time. He's not getting in a hurry. He wants to walk with you. He wants to, he wants to encourage you. And God wants you to walk in the wind. He likes a breeze. In John, the Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 3 and 4, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep, say sheep, sheep, hear his voice. 
And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, God knows your name. God knows your name. He knows your address. He knows right where you're at. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Down to verse 16. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. And Jesus was speaking here. He was talking about the other sheep were the Gentile race, you and me. We're, we, we, we're the other sheep. He wasn't, Jesus did not come just for the Jews, but he came for the Gentiles too. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Hallelujah. Down to verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Hallelujah. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Hallelujah. I, no matter what you may be experiencing, no matter what you may be going through, hallelujah, nothing. What shall separate me from the love of Christ? Nothing. Say nothing. nothing. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can't get plucked. <laughs> You don't know what I'm dealing with. I'm telling you what. You stick with God. Amen. Let him. Don't try to run ahead of him. Don't try to figure out your circumstances on your own. Walk with God. Just walk his pace. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a keeper. There's a book that I'm reading. That I may very well begin to. Start teaching out of in our men's ministry. One of the quotes out of this book, The Secrets of the Secret Place. It says this, and this is number, number four on your note sheet. Distancing, distancing ourselves from God. Always produces spiritual regression. The base word of regression is regret. Distancing yourself from God will produce regret. Regression. Digression. Proximity to God always produces spiritual progression or a base word, progress. Say progress. progress. Move, forward. Move forward. Hallelujah. Grow up. Grow closer to Him. Amen? Amen. Awful quiet today. The word presence, the word presence in, in the Hebrew, in, 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 verse, in verse 8, where it says, Adam and, and his wife hid themselves 
from the presence of the Lord God. That word presence means the face. Uh, it means before, towards, uh, a countenance. Have, I, I know undoubtedly there has been some of you that there have been probably times that you have been wanting to talk with me. And I walk on by. Brother William, maybe they want to talk to me. And I'll be walking on by. Sister Bonnie, maybe you want to talk to me and I'll walk on by. Hmm? Have, have you ever had somebody to do that other than your pastor? Huh? How, how does that make you feel? Huh? It's kind of rude, ain't it? Huh? It's like, don't you have time for me? If I've done that and offended any of you, I'm sorry. Didn't, didn't mean to. This, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm, I'm making this example because I want you to get what what the Bible, what the, the context, what the real meaning. When, when they hid themselves, God wasn't hiding himself. They were hiding themselves or trying to. They was as if, I'm going to walk on by you, God, and try to ignore. Distancing ourselves from God always produces spiritual regression. Proximity to God always produces spiritual progression. We're either growing towards God or growing away from God. I don't know about you, but the crazy world that I live in, I need more God today than I did yesterday. The crazy world that I live in, Sin is exalted to a greater depth, to a greater denigration today than it was five years ago, two years ago. Used to, I could go and watch Avengers and Iron Man and not hear hardly any cussing. And the latest movies, they make one remark in that that is a total mockery. Of Jesus Christ himself. And my heart hurt and ached. Why? Because I have a walk with God. And what offends him offends me. The Holy Spirit had me write down this, this, this question. This is my last question. I'm getting ahead of myself. Which side of God are you living on? Are you living before His face? Or are you walking past Him? I had Shelly sing that song this morning. Show me your face, Lord. Lord, I want to stand before you. I don't want to walk behind you. I don't want to walk away from you. I, want to, I don't want to walk past you. I want to be before you, Lord. I want your face. I want your countenance, Lord, to be smiling upon me in my home and my family. I want your blessings, God. Number five on your note sheet, and I'm parking it. Why is the presence of God so important in our lives? Why is the presence of, of, of the Holy Spirit working in our church? Why is it so important? The only way we change from being dead in the trespasses of our sins being uh, realizing being a new creation 
in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Is when we come close to the Lord. His presence is the place of change. His presence. Aaron, there's places that you have to go to in these factors. Dangerous places. In your work. Hey, Aaron, there's times there's no doubt God's been right there with you. That goes for all of us. The presence of the Lord. The presence of God. There's power in His presence. Can I, can I share something with you a little bit? I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, on, I'm probably going to get here next week. God gave the law from Genesis to Deuteronomy. He gave the principles and the precepts of the law to get to try to help man do what he needed to do so that God, a holy God, could come close. Yet the irony of it was man couldn't measure up and man had to keep his distance or else he would die. I mean, you can read it in the Old Testament where time and time again, there was a place where the children of Israel said that God came down upon the mount and the children of Israel literally pulled away from God's presence because God, they were scared of the power and the glory of God and that God would bring judgment because they could not measure up. And they said, Moses, you go. You go get close to God because if we get close, you're, God's going to kill us. That's the beauty of the cross. The power of the cross is the cross made it available where we can come into his presence every day. Not because of our own works, but because of his work on Calvary. That work being completed. The sin nature that is in us, in our flesh, the only thing that will change that sin nature is the blood of Jesus and staying close to his presence. Sister Pat, if you'll come, Brother Jay, if you'll come. Adam and Eve Adam and Eve hid themselves in church growth models and literature especially when it comes to us Pentecostals we they encourage them, don't get too crazy. Don't get too, don't get too emotional. If you've got something to hide from God about, you've got something that needs to change in your life.
time that we spend in the presence, the more power of God becomes relevant and relative and, and working in our lives. I can run down a battery on a, one of our vehicles, but if I don't plug it up to a charger, it won't charge itself. We were all dead batteries until Jesus saved us. We couldn't hold a charge until Jesus saved us. But you've got to stay connected. And he walks with me and he talks. And he tells Joy. 